I've become somewhat of a nomad these past few solas. I have no home to return to anymore, so I move from place to place, city to city, learning what I can. It has me pondering the Seven Realms and their relation to the heroes who founded them. In many ways, the realms are a continuation of them, working both individually and as a unit. Their names shall never be lost to time, but I hope that the mystics behind those names are remembered as well. Recently, I wrote a passage for each of the heroes, compiling what I have learned from previous volumes of the book and my travels over time. I believe we can learn a lot from their story. So here is the tale of how they met, who they are, and what happened to them. Hestia Domino is perhaps the most well-known of the heroes. She was the first guardian of the spark from the great dragon before it departed, and the dragon hasn't been seen since. She was a fiery woman, Fierce like a flame, but uplifting like one as well. Her natural leadership was what formed the Seven in the first place. She also inspired every elf and mystic to fight alongside them when the time came. Hestia valued individuality, resistance and freedom. These virtues stoked her fight and guided her development of the realm of Domino. Those virtues were important to the nation until the very end. Hestia lived in an elven settlement in Greece some 3,000 years ago. The particular settlement was close with the great dragon. She was young when she began to rally the people of the city together, stoking the flame that would eventually become the Great War. She travelled to the Italian peninsula to meet with Leonardo Solaria. He was vibrant, extroverted, and frequently ostentatious. He was well liked however, and much like the element his realm has come to represent, he brightened the days of all in his company. Criticised as shallow, he did value outward appearances and acted decisively. The importance of frivolity and creativity are lesser known aspects of the hero, as he is often only remembered for his former characteristics. Hestia and Leonardo were good friends for many years before the war, and that friendship was mirrored in the realms. Together they decided to begin their venture to the other elven settlements across Earth, to spread the necessity to stand up to the phoenix and aid the dragon they decided to gather a group of strong mystics to directly face the shadow head on. The next hero they met was Econ Andros, a pacifist through and through. He valued life and loyalty greatly, and embraced change whenever it occurred, flowing much like water itself. He was a skilled aquamancer and tactician, widely believed to have been the best of his time in his affinity. Econ was the final mystic to join the cause, he initially denied involvement when they first came to his city in Western Africa. He only joined after being convinced by the next mystic they invited. In ancient China, they met Melody Jingyi. She was artistic and bright, possessing many of the same qualities as Leonardo. Music was a massive part of her life, which later cemented itself into Melodian culture, as she believed that art and expression are the only ways to achieve peace. Jing Yi was one of the more proactive members of the group, and joined the fight upon initial offer without much convincing. She sought freedom for all creatures, much like Hestia, so she quickly bonded with her and Leonardo. The team moved up to the continent of North America. In the far north, they found Arna Zenith. She swiftly became the brain of the war, working behind the front lines mainly to develop effective countermeasures to the Phoenix at the time. Much of this research was lost for unknown reasons. My predecessors have tried to recover it countless times with no results. She valued advancement, much like the realm in her namesake does today. She excelled in many fields and ultimately was a skilled arcanist who fought in the final battle along the other six heroes. After many moons, they reached the rainforests in the Southern Hemisphere. There they met Aurelia Linfia, the guardian of the natural world her motives were to protect the ecosystems at play in the universe, from the cosmic to the miniature scale. She was brave and often stern but fair. Her grasp on the many elements of science, especially biology, was rivaled only by Arna. Her realm is dedicated to the preservation of the natural world and our coexistence with it. 
She was a natural-born leader, much like Hestia, and was quick to offer herself up to aid in the quest. With the help of the dragon, every important elf and mystic met to plan the attack. It was at this meeting they met the final hero, Demetria Raclion. His story is often one victim to whispers and runaways. Much of what is considered common knowledge is unverifiable, factually speaking. Often portrayed as a zealot who enjoyed the power the war bestowed upon him, Dimitri was, at least in one point in history, a rather shy man. He later became valiant and was the only one of the seven heroes who was not an arcanist, prompting a complicated realm-wide relationship to magic that hasn't ended for 2,000 years now in his realm. He was a skilled weaponsmith, inspiring and charismatic, something that the team needed. Econ later joined the group after meeting again, thus completing the seven great heroes. Together, they led a battle using each of their given skills in order to imprison the phoenix. After the war, Hestia and Leonardo moved to magics and devoted themselves to attempting to amend the broken bonds between magical creatures and humans. As for Econ, he poured most of his time into sculptures as he healed himself from the traumas of the war, many of which are preserved in various museums in Andros today. He became a great king of the realm. Anna dedicated herself to the construction of Zenith and was the one who developed the initial biodome designs. Aurelia led some of the first migrants from Earth to the city now known as Grainor. She continued to shepherd the migrating magical creatures, animals, mystics, and elves alike until eventually settling down in Artemis. Jing Yi actually remained on Earth for a long period of time. She had a human partner who was not allowed to cross. It wasn't until he eventually passed she moved over with her children to govern the land of Melody. As for Dimitri, his history is documented the least out of all of the heroes in this book. Much of his memory is stained with the hearsay that not even I can differentiate between fact and fiction. There is truth to every story, mind you, so the rumours would not have risen from thin air, the truth now truly lost to time. The seven heroes were all important and influential in the history of our world. They led the main fight against the phoenix alongside the dragon. We should also never forget the great number of elves, mystics, magical creatures, and even humans who fought the phoenix's henchmen. Without them, we would not be where we are now. I intend to travel back to the oceans of Domino in due course. I cannot be the only one left alive. Since the Great Fall, the realms have closed themselves off in suspicion of one another. I fear that this was a part of a greater goal of the destruction of my home. After I have gathered any survivors, I need to speak with the leaders of magics to try and make them see reason. If the story of the Seven teaches us anything, it is that we are far stronger when we stand together. And I fear there are far greater, far darker forces at play here than anyone can imagine.